We've got a um, small flower buttercup. Uh, Ranunculus abortivus. You have to know your buttercups to get in on something like this. There it goes in that hatch. And your birds. She's still starting to absorb his gills, so you can see some of the slit. And your salamanders, and even your venomous snakes. Just want to kind of be careful because some of these dens hold um, pretty nice um, rattlesnake populations. It has a completely smooth stem with a leaf that's heart shaped at the base. There is no way anyone can be completely sure just how many kinds of plants and animals live in the woods around one of Tennessee's oldest forests within sight of a busy suburban highway. But the plant count alone is up in the hundreds. This is one of two species. I'm gonna have to make a collection of this. You might call it a library of nature. You got some mayapple up in here. I actually just taught my little girl this one because it looks like an umbrella. Students from Austin P. State University's Wildlife Society and several community volunteers spent one intensive spring weekend just starting to find out what lives on this land. Looks like a uh, deer mouse. The red belly. Is it a red belly? Uh-huh. Okay. He's still there. We've heard the, the wood thrush down in the woods and so on. A lot of our harbingers of spring, you know, are, are already here. Mm -hmm. The Louisiana water thrush down into one of the water holes down in there was hanging around singing, setting up his territory. So, so yeah, it's been, we've been seeing some interesting things. What is really rare here is something that doesn't fly or walk or wiggle, something that's been the same for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. About 200 acres of natural forest right in the middle of these urban woods. Never cut, never farmed, and never disturbed. And it's an easy walk from the highway, just a few hundred yards back over the ridge. The hard part is knowing when you're there. It doesn't look all that different from the rest of the property, at least not at first. There are two ways to tell when you're in a real old growth forest. One is that there tends not to be a whole lot of brush and undergrowth because the big trees shade it out. The other is that if a tree is undisturbed for say a couple of hundred years, it can get to be a pretty good size. And then you notice, no stumps. It's never been cut. Every fallen tree fell on its own. To find something like this, especially in the heart of a major metropolitan area, is ex exceedingly unusual. In fact, a lot of people just don't have any concept of what it means to be a natural forest because everything you see around you has been so highly altered. Most of our forests have been logged two or three times. Uh, everything usually has been converted to pasture. We've got all kinds of invasive species coming in. So for, for people to actually have a chance to maybe come here one day, see what a natural forest should look like, uh, that's a tremendous educational experience in itself because you can't preserve what you don't understand. The old growth and the woods around it are right across the highway from Nashville's largest city park, and they just might be part of that park before long. Volunteers have already raised almost $11 million to buy this land, give it to the city of Nashville, and preserve it for everyone to learn from and enjoy. It's such a project size-wise and money-wise, we probably wouldn't have tried to do it except for the fact that it has this old growth forest on it. It's um, oaks and hickories and maples and black gum and beeches. We believe that it will be the largest old growth forest within an urban park in the country. And it's not just one kind of um, large tree, it's, it's um, a lot of different species of trees that are um, well over 200 years old. So it's a way for Nashville to be special in yet another way. You just look at those big trees and smile. I mean, they just make you smile. You just want to give them a hug. Is that, a, uh, is that what I think it is? Is that a giant persimmon? William Fields wow. is property manager here. That is huge. He was raised on this land. This is where he learned about nature and the outdoors. And he wants it kept natural so others can do the same. And the thing about it is it's right here in Davidson County. The schools is close. The kids can come, take courses, learn about wildflowers, trees, and different things, wildlife. It, and it, and it's to have it so close to being Davidson County right here in Nashville is just something really special. The city comes right up to the edge of this property, but that may be as far as it gets. Every different kind of plant and animal that's found here is another reason to preserve this land. And that's why those students keep coming back to find and count and find some more. I'm Craig Owensby on Tennessee's Wild Side.